Hello, and welcome to the College Humor Podcast. Uh, this is uh, a podcast where the cast of College Humor, um, we're just going to kind of hang out, fuck around, play some games, talk about some sketches, you know, just, just sort of hang with you a little bit. If you are uh, listening to this uh, and not seeing any video, uh, not seeing the cool thing that Lily is wearing, uh, you can watch it uh, on CH2. If you're watching this on CH2, you can watch it on Dropout a week earlier. Uh, so uh, those are all the places you can Enjoy yeah. the content that we're shoveling yeah. into your eyes right now. Um, joining us today, two very special guests and one less special guest. <gasps> uh, <laughs> I'm always very known. Uh, we have our brand two brand new cast members. Uh, to Hi. my left, we have. Uh, Tao Yang, I and, thought you were yeah. saying. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm immediately throwing you under the bus. <laughs> I was like, why won't he say anything? Uh, and to my far right, we have. Lily Do. And returning, we have. Brennan Lee Mulligan. Yeah, oh. the old, old and uh, bro uh, broken, yeah. dusty, you could busted. See, he's super busted up right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Agent J. You're Agent K. <laughs> he <laughs> makes yeah. this look good. I'm Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah. great. Um, well, yeah. So uh, uh, new to college humor, but also new to LA. Um, yes. you know, we would normally just kind of like chat about what's going on in our lives right now. But you two probably have like the biggest change going on in your lives because you moved across the country to start yes. a brand new job yes. and meet a bunch of brand new people. So uh, I don't know. How's that going? <laughs> I mean, pretty good so far. I'm like in LA a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to try and convince anyone of anything, but. I love it here. <laughs> I love it. When yeah. can you say New you York love? sucks? Yeah. It it helps to move here when it, in like <laughs> we're gonna slowly outnumber Brennan. It all like the know. all the all the people who who yeah, here are we're all former New Yorkers. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, we all got the hell out of it and had to get out of yeah. it. <laughs> all very sadly departed the better city. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I do think it helps to to come here when it is like blisteringly cold in New York, and then yeah. come here and yes. like, the flowers are blooming. And I also think New York slowly wore me down. If I'd only done like one or two years there and moved out, I'd be like, oh, I miss the big city. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm like, uh, it is a hellhole where the subway never works, and I <laughs> yes. um, I eat rats for I'm dinner. So, I'm so sorry, but this feels like a cruel prank <laughs> to have to have brought we, you on here we for this punked particular you. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, like there is like the feeling when you're when the subway is like so hot in the summer when like sweat is dripping down your nose you don't know when the next train will come i won't miss there are a lot of things i will but miss don't you kind of like the grit tao <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's important for everyone to recognize that this episode of the podcast is about welcoming lily yes. <laughs> and, and this is what we want to do with our time yes. and as someone who understands um how exciting and fun this episode is as a result of that i just want to say that i'm really glad that you guys are here in this uh, city los angeles and um uh, my feelings on all the wrong things you're saying are well documented in a canon college humor sketch. Canon. <laughs> Thank, canon. You. Thank you, Brennan. What about canon. Dwayne Reed? God, <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have to go to those anymore. What are the non canon college humor sketches? Um, I would say <laughs> <laughs> it'd be very funny to, to just to, to, uh, like immediately now declare like some sketch like yeah none of this yeah. ever actually <laughs> happened. Hello, my name is with Josh Rubin is explicitly within the text of the video him playing a character. So I would say that those characters are in fact non-canon. It doesn't oh, exist cool. within wow. the universe. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Lore. You yeah. heard it here first. <laughs> there you go. Um, no, you guys are wrong. And the, uh, the, well, the critical thing is this, right? Is like, uh, uh, listen, I love Los Angeles. It's wonderful. It's a m metropolis in the richest country in the history of the world. So the amenities, facts so far. Yeah. So yeah. the uh, the you know amenities that are provided by it are of course uh, staggering to the quality of life of, in fact, the vast majority of humans that have ever lived on the planet. I think you can live a good life in New York. You just have to be um, very rich and not a participant in the gig economy. If you have to take the subway six times a day and it is broken down every single time, it is hell on earth. Unless you <laughs> recognize <laughs> How can you defend that? Unless you recognize that you yourself are bad and deserve <laughs> that uh, life. Oh yeah, that's, that's, uh, yes, yes, that's a big difference. So it's a city for shitty people. Yeah. Yes. Or a city for oh. people that have the humility and mm -hmm. spiritual acumen to understand mm -hmm. that not everything in life is supposed to be comfortable. Mm. That's true. Now, how long were you both there? I was there for five years. I was there for eight years. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I was there for five before it grounded me down. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There you go. I, I feel bad. I think there's going to be a lot of, oh. No, I, 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 I get to walk out of here yeah. understanding that my spirit is neither oh, brittle nor weak. <laughs> so wow. that's sure. fine I, for me. It didn't grind me down. I was like happy living in New York. And then I just got, I was like, oh, I'm happier living in LA too. <laughs> I had not felt like I didn't like it until I left last summer for like a theater festival for two months. I hadn't left for longer than yeah. 10 days. And that's when I was like, I have Stockholm syndrome. I, I had a similar experience where it was like every every year, I just like, I needed like a little bit less time before. I was like, I just got to get out of the city a little bit. And uh, yeah, just like kind of kind of getting yeah. out. Yeah. I flew back to New York in the middle of a blizzard and stepped into like a two foot deep puddle as like sleet and hail was coming in at like less than a 45 degree angle, like horizontal, cutting into my eyes and face. And I screamed into the wind and it was so loud in the city that no one could hear me and I've never felt more alive. Oh, oh, God, oh, no, this, God. Is, this is exactly what is wrong. Is that character exactly. building? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. No, it's good. It's good and right. No, and basing your life no. around what makes you comfortable oh, is I, a soporific I, that is eventually going to leech all of your spiritual oh, strength. This is it. like, we've had this conversation before, <laughs> uh, but I will say like, this is is the thing that that drives me crazy the most mm-hmm. is this um, like because I wouldn't I wouldn't take up the position uh, that I do um, uh, of of like the big like two middle fingers thrust fully up towards New York if it weren't for the fact that that so many people mm-hmm. were uh, were constantly telling me how great the city is mm-hmm. uh, and it's like like that is what drives me crazy it's like I, I've lived a lot of different places and they're mostly for the most part they're all Fine, yeah, and uh, it's just as fine. And the, and the, anyone like insisting that's like, no, nah, this is the best. It's like I'm gonna push back just as hard in the other direction now. I have yeah, to. I, I must. Know. Yeah. My New York spirit animal is me eating a bodega sandwich on the subway, <laughs> crouched in the corner because there are no seats and I can't stand for that long. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's character. I mean, that's I do great. miss that. Like I'm walking. T- 20 blocks and I'm eating like a sandwich or like a slice of pizza while I'm like maneuvering my way around. Towards like, it's cool to live in New York for a long time and be like, I know how to live here. Mm -hmm. And like, I know exactly what's the best route to take. And if you're like, with someone who's visiting, you're like, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna be like eight blocks ahead of you while you're like getting mowed down by tourists. Like that is a good feeling. Mm -hmm. To to feel like mastery over. Mastery over the city. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that there's an expression, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And I think anyone who's ever played a video game on hard yeah, mode I mean, understands the, be- the the joy of living in New York. That's how I feel. I feel walking around here, like New York right. has trained me to like, not to like have a sixth sense of where dog shit is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and I can and it's there's a lot of dog shit in LA. Yeah, like, I tr- when I moved here, I was like, oh, this is why Sublime was always singing about dog shit. <laughs> 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 I was like that popped up a lot in their songs, and yeah. I never never fully connected why. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so yeah. you guys are here now, which We're is here. really exciting. Uh, what? So wait. So so what, I think the fans at home will want to know. Walk us through the idea of you guys, because you guys applied for the job. Mm-hmm. There's a couple rounds of whatever. Wh- what was it like getting the call? Because because both of you guys had gotten similar calls for UCB stuff. Because you guys for are sure. both UCB people as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so talk me through like what that what that like that what, that joyous occasion that uh, only could happen in New York. <laughs> it can. It really can only happen there. Yeah. Can't uh, get calls anywhere else. No, never, never anywhere else. I, for me, like uh, my order of like how to feel was first like excitement immediately got subsumed by dread of mm-hmm. like doing the entire move. Yeah. yeah. So when I I was a coward and when Sam called me, I was like, oh, I see a California number. I like didn't pick it up. Oh, <laughs> you thought no, the truth comes out. And I. Uh, uh, my my phone translates like audio v- into like voicemail, so you can see like the transcript and stuff. So I saw like the transcript of it, and I called Sam back, and the entire time he was like so excited to offer me the position. I had my like head against a window, <laughs> just like thank you s- s- so much. <laughs> I'm thank you so much. I'm so excited. I talked over with my girlfriend and. Uh, and discuss it with her. So I didn't accept immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I accepted hours later, but it was just that dread of like, how do I move and all my stuff and where do I go and how do I do it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I 
And also, I think I had emailed because they were like, the call will come this week. And then it was like Thursday. And I was like, is it coming? Mm -hmm. And they're like, we'll let you know early next week. And that allowed me to finally relax. But then it came on Friday. And I had just, my boyfriend and I had just moved in together into a new apartment. Um, him one month before me, like one week before. Because uh, I just had not expected to get an interview for this job because you just can't like make plans around like jobs you might not get. Yeah. Um, because you usually don't get them. And so then I got the call, and um, unlike Teo, who respects his partner, <laughs> I said yes immediately. Also, my boyfriend and I had discussed before, but I was like, I don't even have a conversation. I already know the answer to <laughs> I, was like, I was just like, we had already discussed that if I got this, I was gonna take it. Uh, and, and so I, yeah, I, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting that call that day, and then I got it. And they wouldn't tell me who the other person they hired yet because I was the first person they'd call. So I didn't know mm. who else. I didn't know it was Teo until later when I when I like asked Reka. Because you two knew each other. Yes, and, we did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I was surprised too, but I was not nearly as proactive as you, and I didn't email when I didn't get. Like uh, a call by like Thursday, and I had made peace with the fact I that I a, didn't get it. I got it. an email, or I can't stop thinking. <laughs> I, I need to know what's the deal. I felt so calm. I was like, I didn't get it. It's fine. And I had told my girlfriend the night before, like, I didn't, probably didn't get it. It's fine. Like, I'm happy with it. And then I get to get the call. I was like, Oh no! <laughs> no, no. I got to figure work. out my life now. No. Yeah. Now you you mentioned that I feel you mentioned that your um uh, you like look you're, you're scanning that area code you mentioned that your your yeah. voicemail uh, transcribes things there's been a couple of things you said you're like are you like a gad like into oh, gadgets and huge, gizmos and huge gadget <laughs> guy my Android phone now does screen calls where it doesn't pick up or it does pick up and it just goes hi this person is using like uh and like Google screen callings for like telemarketers yeah. they actually call you and then so it, it, that's what plays and then I see a transcript of that entire conversation if it happens <laughs> it's Great. I oh. feel like it was like immediately sort of like it's like cool, we'll get you on Slack. It's like I'm already in, and you know I I'm know. using all the little shortcuts. I'm in the main yes. frame yeah. of Slack. <laughs> yes. Wait, you hacked into the company Slack <laughs> yeah. prior to? It's incredible. Uh, yeah. I did. What's well, so funny because I think I'm like good at technology because I went to like a computer science like magnet middle school and like everyone like learned how to code when they were really young and stuff. But then when I actually get into an office, a setting that I'm not comfortable or familiar mm. in, I'm immediately like, Teo, how do I set up my printer? How do I log in to the mainframe? <laughs> I need yeah. to get into the mainframe <laughs> to get the data. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the Discord bots and how to make them because <laughs> I will probably will make one maybe this weekend honestly we we used to have and by I say we I mean the cast um uh, and, it, and it, we used to have um, bot privileges on Slack, and I think mainly we, we had bot privileges because like no one had thought to turn it off. But of course, like we're a bunch of idiots, and sure. so we just immediately made like twenty different bots, <laughs> not realizing that they were active across the entirety <laughs> of, of oh. Slack. And I remember uh, Murph made a bot that anytime someone someone typed either um, LOL or ha ha ha, the bot would would come in, and it had like. One of five different um, like responses that were basically in the realm of like, hey, keeping it light. <laughs> and so there was like some shitty like basically like a shitty middle <laughs> manager <laughs> bot <laughs> who was there like anytime <laughs> someone told a joke and someone reacted to it, they were just like, yeah, we're all having fun yeah, here, keeping and it cool, dude. It was, it was like a, like two hours after that bot was made, it was like it was like, oh, we can't make bots anymore. It was like, yeah, we were having a, an important conversation in this other channel, and this this fucking bot kept chiming. Okay. Okay, well, if it's so important, why are you LOLing? Why are you laughing, huh? Are you That's a great point. Stay on point. Stay yeah. on point. I guess they're just keeping it light. Yeah. You know? yeah. You gave a bunch of comedians access to be able to like write like simple word bots that just like respond with bad punchlines yeah. to yeah. any text. Okay. Yeah. What could go wrong? I, this is something I said in a writer's meeting a couple months ago. I think that our fans, the college humor fans, would riot and and s truly overthrow the company if they knew what makes us laugh. Oh, for sure. <laughs> because the the things that are funny to us in the writer's room versus the crafted professional comedy that goes out on the channel, it we are the stupidest people <laughs> oh, in yeah. the world. It's like uh it's like like being addicted to 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 something like just needing like the next biggest highest kick. I feel like the stuff that like makes us laugh now are 
the things that just like break all the rules yeah, of comedy. So true. it's like it's not even recognizable as a joke. It's just like uh, it's just someone doing or saying something incredibly. So we're just like that's so bad. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I remember like one of my, the last shows I did on Harold Knight in New York before moving out to L.A. Uh, a better city. Uh, a worse city. Uh, yeah, yeah. Barely a city. Uh, just sort of a sprawl. Okay. But the yeah, important thing is, I mean, it's a nice suburb, I guess. But the important thing Great is, uh, you know, if you want to get well, a place in New York's the best city in the world. So the important thing, I think, is that looking at like this last show that was happening. So one of the last couple of shows, and I just at a certain point, it's like, well, if I do bad comedy, what's going to happen? I'm going to get cut. I'm already stepping down. And so I went out into a scene. It was like some group game, and I went out and just started going like, ah, ah, ah. and then someone was like, "What?" And I went, "I'm the bird sheriff." <laughs> and, uh, and yes, I'd laugh at that because it's like I don't expect I expect you guys to like start flocking and being birds. That's what I, I expect. I laugh because it's so stupid. It's anyway. so stupid. Exactly. Mike Kelton came up to me afterwards and was like. That's my favorite thing you've ever done. <laughs> and, and, but what ended up happening was this it was a funny element of like so so you know it, all of us study at UCB we all know the idea of game right and like baseline reality versus unusual thing and in an average sketch your baseline reality is some part of normal lived human mm -hmm. experience and your unusual thing is going to be something wacky that subverts that and you have a classic sketch right but to a comedian living in comedy day in and day out, at a certain point, producing good comedy becomes your personal baseline reality. Yeah. And therefore, the introduction of an unusual thing could only be something staggeringly stupid. <laughs> and that becomes the funniest thing of all, because you're like, look at what bad comedy that is. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and so you get bird sheriff material. Yeah. Someone on the Discord asked us, Teo and I got on yesterday for the first time, and they were like, what's your sense of humor? And I was like, huh, the kind of stuff I like is I think like like veep and satire, mm -hmm. and like we said, you're the worst ones, and it's like dark comedy, smart, whatever. The stuff that I myself like is just a guy getting punched in the dick and balls <laughs> over and over <laughs> again. So <laughs> Something about people in person, and it's so childish, but like when someone is just suffering in front of me and they know it's gonna happen, I laugh so hard. Oh, yeah. Just like making my fr roommates taste a bad spice or something. <laughs> That's it's, funny. There is a feeling that like jackass will outlive anything we create. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's so I remember good. someone talking about how like, like um, uh, Mr. Bean is like incredibly popular across like around the world. And yeah. it's part because it's like, it's like, it's all physical, no, like you, you can speak yeah. any language and it's yeah. like, you can see someone like. Well, there's also a great old uh, uh, Zatina Fey quote from Bossy Pants where she goes something along the lines of like, of like, that is about what we're talking about of, of the, the thick skin you develop as a comedian where she's like, if you want to make an audience laugh dress your biggest your biggest dumbest cast member guy up as a little old lady and throw him down a flight of stairs if you want to make a comedy writer laugh throw an old lady down a flight of stairs oh, <laughs> that's funny you make, me, you make me laugh <laughs> oh she's not gonna be okay <laughs> Oh. That was a Mr. Show sketch, right? Of like the clown who was an old lady who yeah. came in like with a walker. Like that's a crazy. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's, you know, people may not understand me. Like, oh, that's awful to throw. And it's like, yeah, of course I wouldn't want an old lady thrown down a flight of stairs. But it's just the thing of you, it, like any drug, you start to develop a tolerance. And I would argue that even for non-comedians, but people who are deeply immersed in comedy culture, that's a lot of what we see with memes that sure. fly through windows of self reference over and over again until you get, see a funny meme online and you're like, this will be indecipherable to sociologists, I'm gonna say 30 years from yeah. now. Oh, absolutely. I would say 30 now. seconds from now. I would say <laughs> like me as I read it, yeah, yeah, I'm like, what? The amount of time it takes for, for like, like it's uh, like it's, it's like oh here's the meme here's thirty iterations of it here's the self referential version of it here's the backlash to it here's the just like off the wall right. da da like nothing fucking matters version it of actually, it and then, certainly back to tech and gadgetry stuff it actually was what initially sold me on an emotional level on the idea of the singularity because people will explain singularity to you and like computers will get to a point of uh, self increasing adaptation that beggars belief and you're like what computer can't get smart that fast you know. <laughs> You know, like in your head, and then you look at how memes evolve and change on the internet, and you're like, 
oh, I start to get it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I start to get how these r sort of fractal continuations of like something evolving where its own evolutions increase the rate at which it evolves. Mm. You're like, oh, I can see that happening with a fucking SpongeBob meme, let alone an actual supercomputer that's sure. trying to increase its like computational ability. I mean, yeah. this is very nerdy, but last summer, I think, there was like Google had a collaboration with this company called like Deep learn deep mind or something yeah. and they created a like a new form of like ai it's basically like a neural network that learn the game Go, and like Go is supposed to be one of these games yeah. that's like... Unsolvable. Yeah. Unsolvable from like a brute force of just like figuring out all the different iterations of moves that could happen. Yeah. This like neural network was able to beat like a, you know, one of the grand masters of Go after like multiple games. Uh, and not only did like it beat him like many times, uh, Go like masters are like looking at the computer's moves and being like, oh my God, we've like never seen this <laughs> yeah. move before. Wow. Like this is like a new form of like, this is like a new strategy that we've never like encountered. And it's not like that game is like 30 years old. That game yeah, is hundreds, hundreds and yeah. hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, machines are just, they have so much more computational power. Right. But you like, you look at that like, and compare it with these sort of like you know Terminators type like apocalyptic sort of it's like it's like oh yeah like the robots can take over and like I feel like people it's like oh yeah what a what a flight of fancy what a what a uh, like well, how would how would you like well, sure, wouldn't you notice like something was going up and it's like this is happening at the same time as like Boston Dynamics is making like oh jumping yeah. just, just like like jumping and biting robots it's like hey yeah. we made a new biting robot anyone gonna take a look at this it's like, <laughs> like mean, why are you making a biting like, robot <laughs> like, how, don't nar worry. how narcissistic to even think that they would like be interested in us and not just like create their own robot paradise. Yeah. Yeah. I also love the idea of we're creating them to move in the ways that we move. Like so much effort has been on robots like walking. And it's interesting to think like what would a super intelligence design to design something capable of movement in the same way that it opened up new avenues of playing Go. Maybe it's going to be a creature that moves in some insane unnatural way. I'm just getting psyched thinking well, about it. Well that's why they, they have that. They that, do have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have they, like the uh, oh sorry, go ahead. No, you describe it. The, I don't they have these like to. genetic simulations where it's like uh, you you have you give like a program like a goal just get to the other side as quickly as possible of like a, a flat terrain, and so it just uses like genetic algorithm to like um, all the ones that work okay, like make it more like this, and then all the ones that are bad just don't make it like that at all. Yeah. And so then you start seeing like these weird like uh, like movement. Uh, patterns where it's just like they're just inching across or they're just like rolling on top of each other. There's, and they like, like my learn Sims how to game jump. Is like, yeah. Yeah. There's like, one that runs and it's just like that. That's yes. so, the idea of like, actually the most efficient way to get across a room is to slap your own ass with your feet <laughs> as hard as possible <laughs> and you tumble forward. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh, what a majestic creature. Yeah. <laughs> I see God all efficient, around us. Efficient, yes. Uh, efficient, turns out efficiency is goofy as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This ass slapping given is just funny. <laughs> I mean, like, he's so fast. Yes. Um, we should probably um, uh, move on to one of our other segments here. No, this is good. But this is fun. Uh, <laughs> this we're is having good. a good time here. Um, why don't we do, um, let's do a rejected sketch theater. Let's do a little bit of theater. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we'll pass this out. Um, this, you know, Teo and Lily, you haven't been here long enough to have a sketch rejected yet. Um, Could be can't soon. Wait. Could be soon. But yeah, Could just wait. Um, this was a sketch I wrote that we did not get to make. Um, and uh, we'll see why very soon. Um, uh, I, I, I can go ahead and I will read. Um, there's not a whole lot of parts here to read, okay, which is great. Um, I'll read for the VO. Uh, uh, um, uh, Brendan, would you mind reading Stage? Uh, uh, Tay, if you could read read uh, Man, and uh, Lily, if you could read Driver. Great. I think that, that just about covers it. Great. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> the title of this sketch is A Car That Won't Play the First Song in Your Music Library. A Car That Won't Play the First Song in Your Music Library by Mike Trapp. Mm -hmm. Exterior, event space, night. A cool, suave man exits the building. A valet hands him a set of car keys. The man smiles and approaches a cool-ass car on the street. What defines comfort? Is it Italian leather seats? Glamour shots of car seats. Man sits into them. UV resistant sunroof? Sunroof opens up. A complete automated self-driving system? Man leans back and presses the on button. Or is it? The car starts blasting music. In a perfect world, AB machines by sleigh bells. But I know that's not possible. The driver visibly startles. He fumbles for his phone. Damn it. 
shut up. No. A car, car that won't play the first song in your music library every time you start the damn thing up. Pan over to reveal a second car. It looks like shit. Some doof climbs in. The new Toyota Silence. Doof plugs his cracked phone into the car. He listens. Nothing happens. He smiles, satisfied. <laughs> Because you used to like ABC by the Jackson 5, but now you've heard it every morning. Those first four bars are torture. Doof rolls down windows with a manual roller, you know, like cars used to have. Everything else about this car is total trash, but at least you don't have to explain why Aaron's party starts playing when you turn the key. <laughs> Doof adjusts the rearview mirror. It falls off. Or why you even have that song on your phone in the first place. Doof puts on sunglasses. The Toyota silence will make you wonder why they even design cars any other way, and if there's a way to change that. And then you'll spend a couple hours Googling for some solution. Solution. Some way to make Vampire Weekend's A-Punk stop playing all the time. But you can't. Even if you delete your music library, it will just play your ringtones instead. Doof drives away past the fancy man's car, music blasting out of it. We hold onto the fancy car. Inside, the man fiddles with his phone. Off! Turn off! The man finally shuts off the music. So get a Toyota Silence, because a car shouldn't be able to ruin Toto's Africa for you. <laughs> oh my god. Um, Why wasn't this made? Oh, um... Just the cars? Uh, there's two cars, uh, in an off-site location, um, uh, the music rights for about four different uh, uh, famous pop songs, and... Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. This we this would be the, mo it. the most expensive sketch to produce ever, and it's two pages long. We can't buy an long. Italian car for a two-page sketch? Is that what I'm finding out now that I'm already in L.A.? Honestly, <laughs> yeah. the the music is probably more more of an issue than the car is. Yes. Um, uh, but yeah, this is inspired by My Hell, which is that uh, uh, AB Machines uh, by the Sleigh Bells plays every single time I turn my car on. And a song that bangs. As it bangs, and, I it, and it bangs a little too hard because when it's like five in the morning and you're heading to set, the last thing you want to hear is this like scream like, <laughs> like, like ah fuck. Um, it's it's a nightmare. And like I know like everyone's like, oh you can like you can make a track that's just like a blank soundtrack that that is titled like A A A A A. And it's like like people have like these weird hacks to fix it, but it 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 there, I have this deep feeling me like I shouldn't have to do this. Yeah. It shouldn't be like sure. this. Yeah. If this was like the first song in your phone, like yeah. So th this uh, is a weird, if you if you are not used to driving, you may not be familiar with this. But if you for like a lot of a lot of uh, this is not an uncommon problem. A lot of like common uh, yes. uh, uh, modern cars will have like a USB hookup or something oh, where you can like, plug your phone in. I, and if you do, a lot of them will play the first song in your music library every time you plug in yes. for the first time. I've been in enough rental cars. Mine is even worse. I like used to tour with UCB, so we'd be on the road in the car. If you use my phone for the map, it starts playing a improv podcast interview with Abra Tayback <laughs> at, at AB. Yeah. So all of a sudden, we're like tired, and it's just someone getting interviewed about their improv experience and we're like a great oh. person normally would love to hear it but we're just like no it's it's, it's all because like there's that and i have that and then it's not the next track but like three tracks later there's like a i have a stand-up album on uh uh, on my phone, and there's a track on there labeled "Abortion," which is that like so. It's just like it's like cool. I've got like uh, I've got you know sleigh bells screaming at me, which again I like sleigh bells, but I've grown to yes. deeply hate yeah. this song because yes. of like hearing it so much, and like and then to hear like <laughs> just like you know years old stand up comedy about abortion is just like I don't <laughs> I can't oh, it's I old, can't old do stand up I can't on the do Sundays. this. What's the deal with abortion? Uh, it's really funny i i have never had this issue but i think the idea of killing a song for yourself is very relatable oh, and yeah. i used to have music ringtones and that is a fucking mistake yeah uh, uh because the truth is every phone call is bad and with the exception of the two we just talked about earlier <laughs> on the podcast which were good phone calls but uh for the most part when you get a phone call it's like uh, let's like oh if this is not a text I don't know. I don't know. If this is maybe a weird anxiety of mine. There's a lot of bad phone calls to get, and so you're sitting there and you see your phone start going, and you're like, "Oh, it's a fucking like debt collector," or like, "Oh, like I'm late and someone's calling to check in." Where like, "Fuck, this is stressful," and it doesn't help if it's like, "Why do you beer me up?" And you're like, "I'm fucked. This is yeah. so bad." Yeah. You just develop a negative association with something that used to bring you joy. But yeah. then like ringtones are also generic. So I ruined a song for me, and I'm still ruining. I'm like deep into year three, and I will not. 
not change it. So I have my regular wake up alarm in the morning. No, and then I have alarms. a backup alarm five minutes later that is a song because then I would recognize it. And I thought I might like enjoy it and like waking up to it. And all the ringtones like sound like, but that's my, when I hear that sounds like you need to be getting up like to recognize that. And I was looking for a song with a really twangy, like loud opening. So something like Sleigh Bells would actually be great. But so many songs have like such a slow intro. And so um, I used Formation by Beyonce, <laughs> a very culturally significant, important <laughs> song. But it starts with like, oh, yeah. it like twangs. And now this when song I twangs, it twangs. That song <laughs> twangs. Um, now when I hear it outside in the world, I'm like, it's time to yeah. get up. I gotta get out yeah. of bed. I had alarms are like the word because yeah. it's like it's like oh now I have like this music's become so deeply associated with the feeling of being both panicked groggy and maybe a little nauseous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here are the songs that I ruined for myself. I had a suite of alarm songs, songs I ruined. Uh, I used to work as a PA and would have to get up at unconscionable hours of the morning. Uh, Blackbird by the Beatles is ruined for me. <laughs> uh, that was my pre, if I had to wake up pre-dawn, I would use Blackbird because it was, was like pretty soft. Pretty soft. So it started like bah, the little like guitar, like, Blackbird singing in the dead of night. And I appreciated a little bit the like, oh, it is the dead of night and I have to be awake. And that one was one. Uh, <laughs> You're right. Uh, what about 1,000 yeah. times into it? Uh, 1,000 times. And then I did Circle of Life from The Lion King. For, it was like around sunrise. So, nah, seven! <laughs> like, like the yeah, sun going up because that felt fun to me. The other one that was funny when I was very miserable at a long-term job uh, was uh, Put Your Little Hand in Mine, which I edited to start at the moment it starts in Groundhog's Day. <laughs> so like, put your own little hand in mine. <laughs> Sunny and Cher. Two, uh, uh, two on the nose. Two on the nose. I know. I had to, that was, yeah, very, very on the nose wake up songs. God. Uh, I feel like you have to pick, you almost have to pick a song that you already kind of hate so that you can't, because it, I'm, I'm like, I'm a little sadder now learning that that Circle of Life is a song that you can't listen to anymore. Oh. That makes me a little sad. <laughs> when my mom would call and they'd always be like, they're just not fun calls. They're always like long, too long. She's berating me. It was set to, um, I forget the name of the song. I think it's like, it's the viola part by John Cage in Velvet Underground and Nico's like Black Sabbath's death song or something. Like Black Angel death song. <laughs> that song, still like it. <laughs> still into it. How about you, Taylor? Do you have any songs? Yeah, I've, songs I've been around? only on Vibrate for the last couple of years and it's honestly the best thing I've ever done. I just have it underneath my head and I just go and I wake Wait, up. Wait, what? You your phone under your pillow? Yeah. That went from reasonable to insane <laughs> in literally. Yeah. That <laughs> because, wakes you up? Because I was thinking, I, I was like, well, I guess I like I have my phone on vibrate too. I was like, but I do still have sound for my alarm. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'd be I'd be very afraid of like I put my fucking massive head on my fucking most expensive <laughs> long every night. Every it's night. made of glass. I also I have a I would say maybe an addiction to YouTube where it's the only thing not the only thing, but it helps me fall asleep. YouTube. Yeah, so I'm just I get sleepy and I just go slide underneath my pillow. Whoa. Are you sleep. a very light sleeper? Uh no, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper. Cause in college I bought an alarm clock that um deaf or hard of hearing people use and it yeah. has an attachable vibrating part it's like a bl little round like and it like shakes your fucking oh, bed oh yes and i put that under my bed i sleep right through it like a little baby i was like wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow it's just a little massage yeah yeah i will watch minutes of YouTube. What are you watching to put yourself to sleep? Uh, usually uh, video essays. Usually people explaining things to me. <laughs> video <laughs> like, essays? Like, like the kind of thing it's like, it's like, it's like oh, here's how, here's how like a comet's orbit works. You know, some, some, like, it's, yes, it's like, here's like, uh, like film analysis. I love uh, any sort of film analysis. But on YouTube, not but, like a podcast? You have to no, like see that? I like to see it. And it's like short and condensed. It's like a nine <laughs> minute, like, up. it's like a nine, you know, like a, a seven minute video and they're like, here's why Wes Anderson is bad. I'm all over that. <laughs> Are you still watching this at double speed? Because Teo was the first person I saw who watches his YouTube videos I, sped up. I do watch that.
that what sometimes. What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> I've heard of people doing this, and I, I do, do this. think I think it's psychotic. Psycho. I, I, do this. I watched the uh, almost all of Ex Machina at like one point two, ruined it. two or one point you three. Ruined yes. you what it was shit. meant to be. I don't do it all the time, but I did do it for Ex Machina. Do you fucking inject lunch into your aorta? Like when you fucking like? <laughs> I could. I would honestly. Uh, uh, I'll just take all the art and fucking right. get it into my yeah. fucking head there as fast as I can. Too much content, and you gotta get it all. So you can't get it all. <laughs> There's so much like like thought and care put into like how like especially like yes like, like it's like this, this is, is how it's like this is we're gonna like we're gonna like let this moment play a little longer we're gonna like like we want you to feel it you want to sit in it if something's gonna play for a really long time it's like maybe because you like, should be paying more attention to this stuff going yeah. on on screen and like the thought of someone just being like nah fuck this speed it up <laughs> speed it up because I go I get it yeah this they're isolated I get it <laughs> <laughs> no it's I about it. so much more than that but you, also, you're 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 uh, enjoying art as uh, the same experience as like being uh, the last thirty minutes when you're in a museum. Yes. You know, you're like, yes, exactly. so like yeah. what's this room? Okay, cool. There's paintings yeah. on the wall? Great. Yeah. Gotta go. The idea of you going to the Louvre and being like, cool, I'm gonna hop on a fucking Kawasaki and just <laughs> slam through room after room going yeah. fucking 80 miles an hour. Like, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. And cool, honestly, she's smiling. It's enigmatic. Cool, the raft is sinking. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is how I go to museums as I go, yeah, What I I is it. the All point? Right. <laughs> yep. uh-huh. uh, but here's the other thing, too, is what, what you are effectively, because playing something at twice speed, I, I hear people I, will listen to a podcast yes. at like 125, Two times speed means that you're like time to nuzzle down for restful sleep, <laughs> and then you put on someone going like, <laughs> just like shooting light and yeah. like high pitched gibberish into your sensory apparatus. It's the craziest thing I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> to, to, to go to sleep to a high speed, high pitched explanation of why Wes Anderson sucks. <laughs> yeah. it's, it is yeah. it's very calm. This is my lullaby. I watch something like that. I can't go to sleep for two days. Days. I'm amped. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing is, I, like, to me, that would be the the we. I, I have a trap with those YouTube videos because I can't watch anyone talk about anything they're excited about and not get hooked. Like oh, if you're, sure. if someone's talking about like here's the you know if someone's like the history of ball bearings and there's like okay here's what you gotta know about ball bearings I'm like. In. I'm like I'm locked yeah. in, and I'm learning the whole time until my brain goes, all right, time to go <laughs> yeah. to sleep, and then I just conk out. Many times I've like helped. Until your brain says you've worn us down. We <laughs> yeah. have to shut yeah. down. Abort, abort. Yeah. <laughs> I've like multiple times like held my phone like this, and like it's completely fallen on my head. Like, oh. <laughs> oh my god! And then this that wakes a, me you up. You gotta get a little phone kiss with a little ring on it. I need one. I hold it. And yes, just... you need a, a headband with a. With yeah. a, with a little Honestly, little yeah, I'm gonna get one of those clips for the for my bed and just have it so it's like oh this. No, what? Is is your girlfriend okay with this behavior? She, yes, not she, to get too personal. I no, guess. she's she's okay with it. She, it actually helps her fall asleep. So the the, she, sound, the, the, the sound of the phone the hitting of your the, head, of the chipmunks covering why why Michael Bay sucks <laughs> puts her to sleep. Cool. And this Incredible. is what she's told me. I've never, I haven't like, but I've I've always asked like, is this okay? Are you, yeah. are you able to go to sleep? And yeah, it works. I used to I used to suffer from insomnia. I would stay awake for like a day or a couple days at a time when I was in my like late teens, early twenties, and I the the like sometimes I would do it to go to because I was like, oh, it's so hard to go to sleep unless I'm demolished, like yes. unless I'm fucked up, I can't quite do it. But now I I just like I can't watch anything because the light fucks my, up my circadian rhythm. So what I do is I turn off all the lights and just. Like brute force, start dreaming. So what I'll do is like, brute force. like I'll just lie down <laughs> and be like, okay, dreaming is what you do when you're asleep. So if we just start dreaming, ipso facto, we'll go to sleep. So I'll be like, okay, what's some crazy shit? I'm on a raft on a river made of lava, and so there's you're a fucking imagining what you're saying. Yeah. If I imagine super hard, I'll just start going to sleep. <laughs> and you have to imagine dream like dreamlike things, and then I'll. You're taking the New York energy into <laughs> your sleep, <laughs> but it's just like. I don't yeah, have time for this, yeah, okay? Yeah. I gotta get asleep. <laughs> okay, yeah. gotta sleep. Hey, I'm yeah. sleeping yeah. here. <laughs> I'm dreaming here. <laughs> Brute forcing your way to sleep. I don't have time for this. I gotta fucking fucking lights off. Head on a pillow. Blanket think, over the body. Think about the most tiring thing in the world. Boom, we're out. Uh, all right, look, it's Jesus, but he's got my dad's face, and he's telling me I'm in my living room, but it's not my real fucking living room. Boom, time all to go to work. Right. Yeah. Now put your little hand in there. <laughs> um, cool. Well, um, why don't we why don't we play our game for for this episode? Um, so none of us really entirely know what we're doing here, but we have here a stack of cards. I'm going to lean forward. 
won't be able to hear me for a while. Uh, um, we have a stack of cards here. These have situations, I guess, that yeah. were written by our producers. Um, and I suppose the goal here is to we'll we'll take one of these. We will. Um, We'll read it, and we'll react as if we were actually in that situation and see if other people can figure out mm. what the heck's going on based only on and those reactions. are we timed? We're going for 10 seconds. Cool. We're going for 10 seconds, seconds, apparently. Okay, so we're does anyone want to be the first out. to start this one? To try, try I'll go. One. I'll go. Great. So Lily's going to take number one here. Number one. So you read, you read it. Take all the time you need. Don't oh, show really? it to us. And, and, and show 10 it. seconds to guess? No, no, no. And then you get to perform it for 10 seconds, okay. and then we get to guess. Or I guess react to it? I don't know what these what, it's, yeah. what the prompts are. Act it out. Act we're acting it out. it out. It's an act out. All right. Hmm. We're talking. Okay. It'd be a weird podcast if there was no talking. <laughs> also. Okay, well, you're not going to be able to re record the Charlie Rose that way, so you're going to want to scroll. Ah, uh, oh, hold on. Sorry, my house is crumbling. Uh, okay. Uh, no, you're going to want to scroll. Okay, I know it's a little, you didn't grow up with this kind of stuff, but you're going to want to go back. Okay. Ah, a tree just Dang. fell through my roof. Um. You are helping an elderly person record Charlie Rose, <laughs> in, and they live in your house, which is crumbling. <laughs> it's like an earthquake That's what is happening. I, I think your parents. Clearer. I think your parents, and maybe not just an elderly couple. Uh, help. Help older. your parents, older, your grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, helping your grandparents mm -hmm. in uh, in earthquake like, type situation. Work a TiVo. Uh, no, I DVR. Guess, yeah. Okay, you are helping your grandparents DVR Charlie Rose during an earthquake. Okay, so the Charlie Rose part was, that was not necessary. That was, that, was, uh, that was me trying to imply that they are old. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. We got that. Yeah. Um, nice. I am in. Uh, you know, it does not say that. Uh, can I say what it is yeah. now? Yeah. Like, okay, great. You're on the phone with your grandpa teaching him how to set the DVR. Also, you're currently in an avalanche zone. I guess it does not specify that I'm in an avalanche. <laughs> just that I live in the zone. <laughs> of an avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> but million, Why would it be hard for you? Millions to of people go through this every day. Oh. They're just in the zone. Oh. <laughs> there is a certain way that people that live in avalanche zones just bear themselves. Yeah. They yeah. have a certain yeah. je ne sais quoi. Yeah. They're, They're ready they, they, to they, jump at a yeah. moment's yeah. notice. Yeah. Loud exactly. noises, jump. All right. Brian, you want to take number two here? Take number two. <sighs> Guys, um, if it's okay, can we just not watch Arrival or Enchanted or any of the Henry Cavill Superman things? Um... Uh, let's just say that That's ten seconds. Uh, yeah, um, your grant. <laughs> oh, someone who's like so tired of like Amy Adams. <laughs> Is that it? That's that's part of that's half of it. I didn't get I didn't get to the other half. Oh no! I'm I sorry. didn't know she was in the Henry Cavill Superman movies. I knew she was in Enchanted and Arrival. Um, uh, I'm terrified there's gonna. I'm so bad with pop culture. <laughs> I'm terrified there's gonna be a pop culture thing on here that I'm just gonna have to deal with. I'm just gonna go for longer than ten seconds. Go please, 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 yeah. That's a I just um, just got back from IHOP and I don't know. It's pretty fucked up. You saw Amy Adams do something bad in an IHOP. You saw Amy Adams eat a whole stack of pancakes in one bite at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> she in, unhinged her jaw in my like a head, snake. In my head oh. canon, that's true. What the card says is yeah. that Amy Adams just broke up with me. Oh. At my oh. But I choose to believe that she would eat a whole stack of pancakes doing I that. See, I so see. Great. Wow. All right, well, I'll take number three here. Let's see what this, I'll go ahead and give this here, to I'll you. Just so you ready? Let's see what this is. <clears throat> okay, don't take two. <laughs> okay, great. It's, a, it's actually, a, there's a long description here. Oh, my. I'm <laughs> so, sorry. Um... As we look forward into tomorrow, we have to remember the words of the people who came before us. And, and remember that when pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. Your Ira Glass doing <laughs> Pizza you're, you're like JFK pizza giving a speech about pizza bagels. Oh, ooh, JFK or Ira Glass. Both of those, I guess, could work with this this thing. Uh, uh, oh, uh, the guy who does ninety nine percent invisible. Um, I, I'm. Uh, it's more in a particular situation rather uh, than a particular person. Giving like a State of the Union address about pizza Close. bagels. Close. I saw it on the card, so I have to recuse myself. Oh, okay, very good. I'll recuse myself. We could be here forever. No, well, okay, mm. well, we'll just go with it. I'm giving the valedictory speech at graduation. 
but there's a mm-hmm. tiny pixie on my shoulder who keeps telling me to talk about bagel bites. <laughs> oh, you didn't even acknowledge the pixie. I didn't acknowledge the pixie. Didn't acknowledge the pixie. I'm trying to ignore the pixie. Yeah. I wrote a speech. I spent a long time working on this speech, yeah. and no pixie's gonna like hop yeah. in here and tell me that like it's, you know. Yeah. It, 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 look, you can already have pizza anytime. It doesn't need to be on a bagel. I'm sick of this pixie yeah. propaganda. I mean, pizza bagels are good. Here you go. Hold these. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. He was reading. Uh, yeah. So the the one is um the uh in the corner, and you want to uh put you know some of that wet st- <laughs> on it. You you got that? You got that? Because time is money. I'm paying you. <laughs> I'm paying you. Um, you are giving instructions to somebody, but your vo- you you have like a weird Ursula voice contract with a sea witch, and and it's like in a fuzzy gray area because you like deferred payment, so your voice is like skipping out. It's like yeah. it's like wonky. It needs to update. I think you're trying to build the worst sandwich in the world uh, <laughs> while you're going through a tunnel and your cell reception is cutting out. Yeah, but you put wet stuff on. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah. You combine your yours and Brennan's, and it's, cl- it's oh. much closer. Oh. Oh, I also thought it was like something was constricting your voice to not let you talk about, I don't know, whatever that thing you were talking about was. If you'd said it, I'd know. Uh, yeah, are you just giving instructions while you're going through a tunnel? Uh, I am giving instructions, and uh, what happens in a tunnel with your... Voice? Voice. Re- cell reception? Yes, and then it would... And your reception's going out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. did it! Are you giving instructions on anything in specific? Uh, for something specific, yes. Yes. What? I don't know. What it is. Go ahead and tell us. Uh, the, uh, I was giving, instructing my assistant to go over Skype to water my house plants, but I forgot the word water. Oh. And also the connection is bad. Uh, the word water. Wet get them stuff. all wet is a very funny instruction for watering. No. <laughs> I want you to go over there and get, no, give them all that wet stuff all wet. wet. <laughs> Hell yeah. Not hydrated. Yeah. Not H2O. Uh, uh, cool. We only have about 10 minutes left, so we'll go ahead and we're going to answer some, uh, some oh, questions yeah. here. So these Ooh. are uh, questions uh, written from um, from. Our, our subscribers uh, on Dropout, our fans. If you want to ask us a question, you can subscribe to Dropout. Go on to our Discord. Um, we're there just hanging out sometimes. If you just you can, we'll answer questions here, but we'll also just talk to you. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, our first question is from Ian Adams, who asks, "What's your most unpopular opinion about comedy?" Um, this ties in, I guess, a little bit to some of the stuff we were talking about before, of like what comedians find funny. But I guess you, it first requires like, well, what's a popular opinion? What's unpopular that I like? Um, What's your most unpopular popular. opinion about comedy? Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'd have to know what's. What's a popular, popular opinion? Yeah, what's a popular? Oh. Um, I think I can weigh in on this and say something about this. Uh, I think I have an unpopular comedy opinion. Mm. Um, I think this is not going to sound controversial, but then I'll say what I'm reacting to. Sure. So I think there is such a thing as evil comedy, mm. right? I think there's such a thing as irresponsible, unethical, bad comedy. Um, and I think that sometimes in progressive circles, people will use a shorthand where they'll be like, comedy can't punch down. It can only punch up. And that's obviously, fu- and that, like, yeah. I know people are being careless with their language there, but I actually think it's critical to say like, no, comedy absolutely can punch down. Comedy is sort of like magic, where it's like, no, like Voldemort uses magic too. Like there's there is like evil, there's evil when comedy. You said it's like magic, I was thinking like <laughs> Top Hat and li- like uh, like Magic Castle magic. Oh. It's, like, it's like magic. It's like Why magic. would I be referring to that? <laughs> what about me has given you I any know, indication? I know that this is it's my very fault. Yes, I'm very yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Um, well, a funny story, I did, my mom told other, my aunts and uncles one Christmas, like, Brennan loves magic cards. And I got a bunch of fucking top hats and wands and stuff <laughs> instead of Magic the Gathering. Very sweet. Magic. Thank you, aunts and uncles, back Magic. when I was like 12 years old. I do appreciate it. Um, no, but I think that the this is sort of, a, I don't know if this is an unpopular tape, and, and I don't know why it's a soapbox to stand on, because we're all on the same side of saying like there's there are bad people who are doing shitty, unethical comedy in the world, but for some reason, the, the technical side of my brain wants to underline like, no, you can have an evil joke that punches down and 
further otherizes a group of people that are marginalized that fulfills the technical bracket of what a joke is. And I think it, for some reason it feels important in fighting for a better world to acknowledge that it's like, just when I see people online being like, comedy can never punch down. You're like, no, it can, and it's bad when it does. Yeah. Like, acknowledge that that is, that there is an evil version of this. Or when people go like, I don't know, for some reason that's a weird pet peeve of mine. When someone's like, that's not funny. And you go like, no, it's funny to bigots. Yeah. yeah. Does that make uh, sense, that yeah, difference? I, I feel like I have a similar thing. My opinion would be, because like the first half of it sounds like something that awful people say, but then what I mean is, I think you can joke about anything, which I feel like I hear said defensively a lot now by like people who do lazy comedy where they did something offensive and they're like, anything can be, calm down. But what I mean is like, in a thoughtful context, probably punching up. I think you can, context just matters, but I don't think yeah. anything is off limits. I think some people have like, oh, you can never, and I'm like, but Sarah Silverman has great jokes about rape, or I joke about um, abortion because I talk about my own experience because I've had one and stuff. It's like, and I feel like you, can joke about anything, but context matters. Yeah, it's like if you take the phrase, like anything can be a joke, people can use that poorly to put the emphasis on the anything, but yeah. you kind of have to put the emphasis on a jo joke. on the joke. Yeah. You know, it's like if you're saying like anything can be a joke, it's like cool, it better be a joke yeah. then, you know? Well, I think that's actually something that I would underline to, to your point, Lily, is uh, people say, make the thing about like what the topic of the joke is, and any topic is open for joking. What lazy, crude, mean-spirited, cruel comics do is they will see people react to a joke and say, you're mad at the topic, and you wanna, what I wanna say is, no, no, I'm not mad at the topic. Your joke has keyed me into your feelings about that topic. Yeah. I don't resent you for trying to tell a joke. I resent you because you, in your joke, have revealed your worldview, yeah. and you're a yes. shitty fucking person. You've shown your fucking soul. I've forgotten about the joke. I see you. The the fucking curtain has parted. There's the man behind the great and powerful Oz. Like, people like to act like their philosophy is not visible behind their material. I'm never mad at the attempt at levity. I'm always mad at who you are. Yeah. I'll have an opinion that's much less dark, and I don't even know truly if it's un <laughs> yeah. unpopular. Um, but I'm very pro pun. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm very anti pun. Um, uh, um, uh, like, I get why people like it, and I think that puns. Can be very bad, and I and I like so I totally get it. Um, but also, uh, and we just had a read through of a project I just finished that is full of stupid fucking puns, um, and uh, they're really miraculous. <laughs> they're really <laughs> fucking wonderful puns. Um, yeah, yeah. And th like there are like th there's something I find um, deeply satisfying about. A, a pun when you're not expecting it, and if it's truly well done, like I think people think of puns and they think of like these sort of like kind of shitty Hallmark card kind of thing, but like like Arrested Development is full of puns, and some of them are like honestly like amazing, yeah. and it is, and, and like sometimes they'll just kind of like sneak up on you because they'll be focusing on this other joke, but there will be a second, like the pun will be like the secondary joke that is just this like little ladle of gravy that you just go like, yeah. mm, mm, that just yeah. like rounds everything out, ties everything together, um, you know. Use it well, but I, I don't think puns are like off the table yeah, I think for me. Puns at all. get a bad rep because of the context in which they're used by yes. uh, dads and office for bosses. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like it's like rap is full of puns. Yeah. Like Shakespeare it's, used puns. It's like when it's, you make a pun and then you're like, I just made a pun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't I that funny? Yeah. Everyone's laughing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's shitty. bad. That's uh, awful. We all know trap's a shitty bitch, but <laughs> I think the important thing is that the um I think the, the bad rap that puns get is about the fact that they can be fully unmotivated. Mm -hmm. Like the puns in your script are motivated by the genre. Yeah. They're motivated by the it's very action. Fun to, like, of the talk story. about this and not reveal what we're talking about. Spoiler wink, alert. Wink. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. everything in there f fully flows. Well, I think one of the reasons that puns get a bad rap is because uh, language is so abstract. And so when you're doing a pun, it can be completely divorced from what's actually happening between. 
trends and performers in the moment. Yeah. It's like, what does this fucking have to do with anything? Yeah. Uh, but if you weave it into the narrative, if you're telling a story, or just the conversation yeah. if you're out with yeah. friends, then it's actually usually delightful. Right, like Arrested Development yeah. ties it into like, he, like, Buster loses his hand, he sits on a hand chair, and it's yeah. all like tied together. Wait, a minute and a half, Teo, what's your thing? And you have to do um, it really fast, like those YouTube videos simple. you like. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I I think Monty Python sucks. Oh, <laughs> no! ah, you heard it here first. <laughs> no, okay, only... that that fully fulfills the the brief because that that is a, a oh god, I died a little bit. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, send me like the the best of. Give me the good. Give me the good ones, and then maybe I'll try to change my opinions. Uh, okay, tell, so tell Have me. you considered watching it at fucking normal speed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jokes are flying by you. <laughs> yeah, it's always just too fast for me. Yeah, you're like, what? That's just, like, this is indecipherable. What is uh, what is the context in which you've um, you've uh, experienced Monty Python stuff uh, um, thus far? I guess I've seen like the Ministry of, like Funny Walks mm -hmm. sketch. I've seen the Dead Parrot sketch because like every one hundred and one sketch class shows it, mm -hmm. and it's fine. I think it's like one of those. It's like watching like Citizen Kane or something now, uh -huh. where you're like, I get, I, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I, if I went back in time, I'd be like, oh my god, a close up. This is amazing. Yeah. And yeah, like a lot the, a lot of the stuff doesn't hold up well. Like yeah. especially in the in the BBC show, there's like some atrocious misogyny and a lot yes. of you know, there's like there's some stuff that's like not great for sure in there. And even seeing like past that of like knowing it's of that time, mm -hmm. it's like eh, it's fine. I don't know. I also didn't watch it as a kid. Sure. So yeah. that's I think a big part of it. Sure. Um yeah, I mean, for me, like, God, Monty Python just hits me, like, right where it's, like, that the, it's the fact that, like, you can have, they, they, you can have a sketch that is, like, this is just the Ministry of Silly Walks, and it's, like, a pure physical comedy sketch, but then you can also have, um, like, a sketch that is, like, about, like, uh, you know, like, philosophy and modes of government, but put into, like, a comedic context, like, just being able to, like, do that whiplash from, like, sure. very lowbrow stuff to very highbrow stuff and, like, mix them together that is just, like, it's like, ah, I love this. Mm. Um, I mean, prove me, like, uh, honestly, hey. I would love to be proven wrong. Sure. Yeah, I have no opinion because I haven't watched their stuff because it was all uh, middle school boys who annoyed me it's, who were really uh, into it. Yeah. And I was just like, no, thank you. Yeah, I get it. My dad showed me that in the closest thing to a religious ceremony I can think of. Like, yeah. in terms of, like, son... I'm going to show you Monty Python now. So like I'm fully on board because it was it's anything you watch as a kid is like gonna be deep in your fucking veins. And I, I think it also like it hits me because it was one of those things that like I like I had you had that I had that feeling of sort of self discovery a little bit uh, like like not not to say like I discovered Monty Python because you know, like obviously it's <laughs> ludicrous but like I didn't really have people being like oh hey you have to watch this it was something that I was sort of like I I had like. I had heard people like mention something like, oh, this is funny. And like I was always very attracted to um, like Terry Gilliam's animation style that was like uh -huh. on the cover stuff. And like I remember as a kid at some point going like, I'm gonna rent Holy Grail. Like I know nothing about this. I just like it, like I've heard the name Monty Python, I've seen this image and think that it's like an interesting image, and I'm just gonna yeah. watch it. And the um, the opening of that film is uh, uh, is a uh, is like a parody of like like oh god my my mic uh, what Ingmar Bergman films this is these like stark like just like oh. white credits oh, on yes. black uh -huh. and it's like it's like four minutes maybe just like boom like this really like almost no no music really like dire and stark and so like when you're a kid going like ooh a comedy this will be fun and you get this like boom boom and like but like the slow realization that there were like jokes embedded into into like the subtitles and there were like jokes that they're like like looking for them was like oh this is this is fun like I, it was this mm -hmm. moment of just like I'm locked into this fun and uh, that uh, moment where you're like oh I'm in yeah, yeah is yeah. so important and so big you're like yeah. and and you have like a lot more leeway to be like this doesn't work but I don't care yeah. I love it yeah, yeah. Uh, I was so I remember being so surprised that there were just these like little jokes hidden into the into the subtitles and like they snuck they, they sure. like like it doesn't feel subtle now looking at it but like as right. a kid where I like was like oh I can ignore the credits in old movies because right. you could normally can and to realize you couldn't here was like oh they like broke the format I know that we're going over right now a little mm -hmm. bit but I do want to throw something out there because in terms of hot takes which is I feel like the national JPM jokes per minute 
is down across media. Whoa, I think across that's true. I think JPM is down. I think there's. I think there's a. JPM is down. <laughs> JPM. <laughs> JP Morgan. JPMs are down I, now, even with the all the comedy that is getting. How created. many shows are there right now on streaming services on television that call themselves comedy and are melodramas? Be honest. How many I shows think, are there? Okay, this is sure. getting into a separate debate, but it, everyone has a different idea on what makes a dramedy. What portion? I'm like seventy percent drama, thirty percent comedy is all I need. Eighty percent drama, twenty percent comedy is wow. all I need. Oh, wow! wow. wow. That, to show. be a watchable show, yeah. To be like a show, I'm like laughing and like losing my like belly over. <laughs> I think the times are too bleak know. for a high JPM. That's true. Wow. Maybe, maybe true. that's so. Maybe you know what? Maybe we we lived through you know 2000, 2000 or 2008 to 2016, and we realized, hey, we need to stop fucking chuckling and fucking knuckle down. <laughs> and get to work. We've <laughs> been having a laugh. Let's chuckle, chuckle more knuckle. <laughs> Let's <laughs> chuckle more knuckle, baby. Let's get these JPMs back up yeah. when the world's saved. Um, well, I want to keep talking about this but I, we're out of time yeah. so that feels like a good out yeah. for it um, uh, I'm gonna we'll get less chuckle more knuckle <laughs> tattooed on my body <laughs> on your knuckles, knuckles. <laughs> knuckles. squeezed in there plus <laughs> chuckle less, less knuckle, knuckle. <laughs> um, thank you uh, so much for watching um, uh, thank you all for, for, for taking the time to be welcome. here welcome welcome uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, um, if you have a question that you want to ask us uh, maybe we'll get to more than one of them one of these days uh, mm. but you can ask that uh, on again on uh, the dropout discord by subscribing to Dropout and go on Discord. Um, uh, see you around. Bye. Later. Hey, it's Mike Trapp. You know, if you want to talk to the cast and crew here, you can at the exclusive Dropout Discord. It's a great place for behind the scenes content. And if you like behind the scenes, check this out. Okay.